Here we go. Welcome to the Boss Hog of Liberty podcast on the We Are Libertarians Network. I'm your host, Jeremiah Morrill, and as always, I'm joined by our co-host, Dakota Davis. Hey, how's it going, Jeremiah? Episode 65, man. 65. I was just saying, I can't believe that this is episode 65. Episode 65. It's your, uh, I think it's your second or third episode without a beard, but uh, here we are. Yeah, I just got tired of it. I, I just got tired of it. I told Clay the barber, trim it all down. Oh, he did it for you. Yeah, he you, did it. You weren't able to manage that yourself? No. All well, right. mine are pretty crappy. My clippers. Yeah. I, all right. Let's get through the, the read, and then we'll talk. <laughs> our show is about our lives in rural Indiana. It's a show about folks who are involved in politics, and we promise that our episodes are going to be a fun and an easy listen. We interview people who are influencers, elected officials, political experts, and folks we just find interesting. On my left, I guess, is a guy that we find interesting. That's Chase Are you Payton. an Indian? No, stop it. No. Wait, just patience. You, he screwed us up. We have to start over. It's all, it's all, we're throwing no, it out. do the read again. Baby with the bow. Oh, no, no, it's, again. it's cool. What's Chase. up, guys? Chase, how you doing, buddy? <laughs> I'm, I'm great. Are you sports desk Chase? Fishing Chase? Uh, we'll see. We'll see how the night goes. Date night Chase? I might have a couple questions for you guys. I don't know. All right. We'll see. <laughs> On the other side of the room, it's the influencer. The yeah. only guy with a JD in the room and a, and a big old barbecue truck. It's uh, my buddy, Bash Kreider. Uh, depending upon when you knew Bash, he might be Bastion. He might be Greg. He might be Mr. Kreider to the little kids in the neighborhood. Welcome, sir. Could be. Hi. <laughs> so uh, we're glad to have you here. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, this is going to be fun. Here. He, uh, he, he rolled up, and his, uh, his lovely girlfriend, Haley, is in the, uh, in the corner of the, uh, in the room off camera today. And... Uh, he comes with the driver. He dri- He gets driven everywhere he goes, apparently, in Newcastle. He's that level. And uh, he comes up without a shirt, and I think it's like we have Burt Kreischer on. It's going to be the first shirtless episode we've ever had. Oh, that's so, good. It's a little that's warm out. I'm getting out of the car with my half-empty bottle of vodka that I brought. And I'm, he's like, man, this is going to be a classy show. I better put my shirt on. <laughs> So uh, yeah, we're here. We're gonna talk. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit with uh, with Bash about uh, about his new business venture. He's starting uh, north of here, a little bit on Main Street in Newcastle. He's gonna open up a, a barbecue stand. Uh, so we're gonna talk about that a little bit, and uh, and then the big thing in Dakota Davis's life. This is probably the biggest event in the last year for you. I, I don't think there's anything else that comes close. <laughs> no. No, this my wedding biggest moment moment. doesn't match it. Yeah. No, you uh, you got to see your idol, your man idol, uh, Gordon Peterson. Yeah, I, I don't know if I'd call him my idol, but your favorite yeah. Canadian, definitely my favorite Canadian. Oh, okay. So you like him better than the Trailer Park Boys? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I think so. <laughs> More than Bubbles? <laughs> <sighs> man, that if if Bubbles wrote a book, maybe. <laughs> so uh, last Friday you went uh, you went down there. So we're going to talk about that towards the uh, towards the end of the show. But you went to yeah. Indianapolis and saw saw a prominent Canadian uh, yell at the crowd. I guess I don't know what happened. So. And, yeah, there wasn't much yelling, but we'll get into that later. All right, Patreon. You got some Patreon news? Yeah, we do have some Patreon news. What is uh, Patreon? Patreon. You can uh, you can donate to us. That's how we keep the show rolling. That's how we are able to afford all this equipment and the sound tiles, the camera. Um, the premium Metronet internet, everything that uh, goes into the show is uh, is funded by the listeners. But uh, it's uh, patreon.com slash boss hog of liberty. Uh, you can donate at any level. We got all kinds of good stuff. Like uh, if you donate at any level, you get a special episode every week called Tinfoil Time. Uh, it's one that my wife and I, uh, Audrey, uh, we put that on. This week's that topic, uh, yeah, it is. Uh, this week's topic was the history of David Icke and uh, his newest conspiracy, which, of course, is that the moon uh, was actually an abandoned fuel tank for a giant spaceship. So, I thought that was pronounced icky. You think, uh, it's David Icke. You okay. think people are going to pay extra money to hear about conspiracy theories from some guy we can't even pronounce his last name? <laughs> it's, it's Ike, it's I a promise. Thing. All right, I, promise. I like Ike. Is that the Mike and Ike guy? Yeah. Oh. Got any Ike jokes? It's spelled differently, Bash. though. I got that is true. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> what the hell did they teach in law school? They didn't teach you how to Can't joke about people's names? No. Well, I just, <laughs> I just got my <laughs> name. <laughs> didn't prepare me for anything. I just got my name thrown into the, into the hat for jury duty. Ooh. So, Ooh. Yeah, we're going to see how that goes. I told him I can't do it. I know Sean Rao too much. <laughs> <laughs> But I've heard that if you live in the city of Newcastle and you say that you know someone, then they're like, ah, just sit back down. Like, everybody knows everybody. It, That's pretty much it. Yeah. I, I, had a, I had an ex-chemistry teacher 
slash band member slash buddy who was on one of my juries. <laughs> <laughs> well, you only know him six different ways. It counts. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Dakota, you Friday night, you uh, you went down to uh, some theater in Indy. Was it the Mirage or something? Yeah, we went to the old National Center. It was. Aren't we corporate? Yeah. And uh, by the way, the guy that runs Old National, major libertarian. Really? Yeah. He was the. I didn't uh, know that. Uh, Rob Schuford is the CEO. He was the Libertarian Party of Indiana state chairman for a while. Wow. Yeah. Huh. So there you go. Learn something new every day. Yeah. You could be a Schuford fellow. That's a level of donation in the 1994 society. A Schuford fellow. A Schuford fellow. Hmm. Very, very exclusive. That kind of. Do- I think it costs get- a lot of money. You have to get sworn into that one. I'm like a uh, a Joyce Moral Fellow or something. <laughs> at like the thirty dollars a month level. Uh, yeah, I don't know. There, there's probably a ceremony. Tim McGuire takes you out back and spins you around three times, and they put on a dark hood. Tells you a secret. Sacrifice a goat. And say we love Murray Rothbard. <laughs> you have to pick a side. <laughs> Are you a reason person or do you like uh, a Cato? You know, yeah. you're assigned a side. Uh, anyway, enough libertarian inter- infighting. Uh, so you you got to t- go on Wall again, the big show on uh, on Monday night. I did, and yeah. I listened. I actually listened to the whole thing. I was very supportive of as a co-host. You did. You listened. To I the listened whole to all of it. Thing? I watched the first fifteen minutes of it on on Monday night, and uh, I didn't hear a thing about your trip. All I heard about was how great this show was, and you were you opened up the Doughboy discussion again. <laughs> That is correct. That's yeah. that was what you got into. We did talk about the Doughboy. Um, I got a lecture from Chris Spangle about I needed to take a more hardcore stance on it, and but uh, yeah, that's how it goes. Do you have a stance? I you have to listen to the We Are Libertarians episode to find out. All right, good promo. Yeah. All right, so we got that out of the way. Uh, let's see. You've got an announcement on here about uh, we've got a convention. I did. I was going to coming it. up I Sunday. Was, you gonna, gonna, we're going to move that to the end. Well, no, we'll, I was going to save it right to now. the end, but I don't think that a lot of people listen all the way to the end. So I, I, I wanted to make the announcement now that if anybody wants is considering running for office, um, we are closing the Libertarian Party of Henry County's it's convention. Like closing this time at the bar. This is mm-hmm. your last chance for a drink. If you want to run for county commissioner, county council. Township advisory board, sheriff, any of those positions. Yeah, uh, you know, you just give me a call. <laughs> reach out to Dakota, <laughs> and uh, he'll uh, he'll walk you through the process. Uh, I'll, uh, you have to go through a very strenuous vetting process where I I basically sit down. We interview for about three hours, and there is a form. I've seen the form. <laughs> you have to fill out a form and talk to Dakota. It's not three hours long. <laughs> it's a it's a piece of paper. You you fill it out and you say, yeah, I agree with this and this and this, and I say. Okay, well, looks like you checked all the boxes. Uh, everybody has to vote on you now. So uh, if you want to run for office, contact me, and then we will get you voted on on Sunday. And if uh, if you don't do that but you want to run for office and you don't make that deadline, uh, Good luck. sorry about your luck. Go be a Democrat. Dakota's done with you at that <laughs> point. <laughs> it's true. All right, so that's that. Let's, uh, let's talk to our featured guest for a little while. Let's talk barbecue. Mm. I've been reading in the paper. I've been seeing these uh, these pictures of the war pig. It was on the cover of the uh, the cover of the Middletown paper a couple weeks ago. Yep. And uh, there's a I'm supposed to. You need to look in the uh, the Patreon group for us because we got a, a request. We have to ask Zach oh. Zach Burcham. I forgot about that. A, had to ask about the naming because you you called it the the war pig. The war pig. Where'd that come from? Black Sabbath. Black Sabbath. I knew yeah. it was was yeah. that his guess. No, he's got it. He had an alternate name, and he wanted us. He pays extra money, so we're gonna we're gonna go to the extra effort here to figure out what he had asked for and find out why. Generals gathered in their masses. (laughs) He's looking from right outside. He's he's out. He he forms the autograph line about about eight thirty or so. uh, Looking, (laughs) he tries to catch everybody. He's got a big shirt, and all the guests sign it. It's gonna go in a charity auction someday. Uh, Yeah, yeah. Did did you consider painting the war pig gray and naming it? The big gray egg. <laughs> <laughs> did Zach ask that? Yep, yeah, he did. Oh, he knows better. He said please. Oh. <laughs> he did say please, so we had to honor it. I got to have a word with him. Not well, a big fan of the big green eggs? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean... <laughs> fundamentally it, designed. So it's, it's called the war pig. <laughs> Actually, that's a mix of two different puns. One, one is the Black Sabbath song. <clears throat> uh, and then also... You've seen that the new Mad Max, Fury Road. Uh, no, oh, I'm I still trying to it. see the first movie. Well, <laughs> they drive a big thing called the War Rig, and it looks oh, it looks I think 
similar. I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I think I've seen that one. I've either seen the old one or the new one, but I don't remember which one. But I watched it last year. It was pretty good. <laughs> the old one would have had uh, that guy that uh, was in. Would have had Mel Gibson in it. Okay, <laughs> I definitely saw the new one. All right. So that big okay. thing that they were driving. Okay, around. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. So you're a you're an engineer now, I guess. You, you built your own Apparently. barbecue deal, and it's not just like, hey, I'm going to get a smoker. You uh, is it a propane tank? What what did you make this thing out of? Well, it started as a thousand gallon propane tank and a five hundred gallon propane tank. And uh, did you talk to Hank Hill to get a hold of? <laughs> uh, Randy Neal actually helped me find those. Nice. Uh, there are. Man. Because people come through town and just scrap thousand pound. <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> yeah, the people thousand have a lot of these tanks. that they just don't need. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, Randy helped me find that, and then Jeff Smiley taught me how to weld, and then Derek Allen, uh, a buddy of mine from high school, showed up and had had some time, and so he and I kind of put the thing together. Ah, I'm a horrible welder. I'm glad that I'm glad that you got to learn. It, it's tough. It's food yeah. grade welding. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. The health department hasn't inspected the war pig yet. Oh, no. Well, they have. I mean, they've they've okayed it for <laughs> for a couple of events. So for a couple of things, yeah, yeah. You've, I mean, you've done. You, this has been a very slow uh, building. You know, if, if we're talking, where it's like a long, sm- slow smoke here. You 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 yeah. you've launched this business. It's been. I, I remember. Th- I don't know, three four years ago, you and I were hanging out a little bit, and you'd invite people over on the weekends. Be like, hey. Mm-hmm. I'm making meats. Come over. Yeah. Back when it used to be free to be his friend. Now you have to pay money to go, <laughs> to go eat his stuff. It was but, costing me for people to be my friend because I was cooking so much meat all the time. So we've, we've reversed that now. So, uh, so yeah, you, you started just you, – you, you've been cooking forever, or did you just kind of take this up and then all of a sudden it turns into a passion? Um, you know, it was – I spent a decade as an attorney here in town, and I, I was just kind of cooking more and more – as a, you know, it started as a hobby, and then it, it just, it feels good. I don't know, have you guys ever barbecued? You yeah. just kind of sit oh, yeah. out there, and it smells it great, feels manly. and there's beer, yeah. Yeah, it's like, it's tough and relaxing and productive, and it's just all the all the best feelings. Now, so I was doing that a lot. I have a question for you. Are you one of those cooks who loves to cook, but never does the dishes? Because <laughs> I have a roommate. I had a yeah, roommate th- like that. I'm glad, I'm glad Haley's not on mic. <laughs> I always had to do the dishes. He'd cook. I had to do the dishes. I didn't even need it half the time. But it, I mean, it was good. Like, I, th- I think as a cook, you you seek out those kind of relationships and situations. I gotcha. So I was find people of, who don't cook but do dishes, and then you cook for them. I was taken advantage of. <laughs> yeah, the first first event, I just found our our little health department certification. It was. Uh, uh, the first official one was October 13th, 2016, and that was before the war pig or anything. So you've been doing, like, I, you go to Farmer's Pike. You've been doing the Farmer's Pike Festival in September. I guess it's Labor Day weekend, maybe. Yep. I was actually, I was just talking to Corinda Kobe today about setting up this year's Farmer's Pike. So you you have a menu of pork, beef, do you do chicken? What, do you, what, what, what kind of stuff do you serve? Uh, what do you like to serve? Well, I prefer, like, true barbecue. I mean, ribs, pulled pork, briskets, those kind of things. Um, and then we also, we do plenty of burgers. Um, you know, the Crider's Drive-In is still, even though it hasn't been open for 40 years, is still very popular <laughs> around here. So, you know, we've got the onion rings. The Fieldhouse Specials, all of the traditional Newcastle. What is the, what is the Fieldhouse Special? The Fieldhouse Special is it's a two decker sandwich. It's it's a bun and then lettuce, tomato, cheeseburger, another bun, pickles, another burger, and another bun. So it's like a a homemade smoked glorious Big Mac. Yeah, pretty awesome. much. Awesome. Yeah, it's nice. What kind of bread is on it? Um. Well, all right, so it didn't used to have sesame seeds, but it is really hard to find double-decker buns these days. <laughs> <laughs> so at the moment, it's got sesame seeds until I gain the clout with a baker. Until, she, like, until Sheila starts making your, your 
Exactly. Buns for you. Across I, town. I was just wondering if it was like sourdough bread or something like big Texas toast. And no, the ingredients for the field house are, are pretty simple. I mean, I'd love it if there was a secret ingredient on that one, but there isn't. It's just, it's a lot of great veggies on a gigantic burger. It sounds nice. delicious. Yeah, it, it's it's just plain satisfying. You know what I mean? There's, mm-hmm. there's not like a trick in the field house. Well, you got a picture of you on the Facebook page <laughs> eating it, and that, it's like, it's like if that picture doesn't convince you that you need to check that place <laughs> out, like, it, it is like, there's so much sandwich. joy in his in his face eating a yeah. sandwich. It's hard not to awesome. smile when you eat that. So that. what you said you, you referenced Kreider's drive-in. Mm-hmm. I was born in I, I moved here in 1993. Okay, I was born in '83, some other place. What is this, and why do people care? Let's start there. Okay. Um, well, what it was was uh, plain and simple. It, it was a drive-in restaurant. Um, the Kreider family and then the Thals family um, ran it through the. Let's see. It opened the morning my dad was born. Oh. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> in uh, May of 1915, or 1950. How old is your dad? Oh, he's hanging dad. in there. He's an old, old dad. Old, old man. Wow. <laughs> what did he know about Catherine Winter? <laughs> <laughs> of 1950. And, then, uh, and it stayed popular through the 50s, 60s, and 70s. It was uh, around that time it sold to the Thals. Uh, or rather, they were partners, and so then my grandpa left, and it it stayed around for another several years. But they they sold great food, specifically these onion rings that are they're hand breaded. They're they're really good onion rings. Um, and I don't, I, th- I don't I, see any here. <laughs> yeah, I know. And I love onion rings. We're now. about to start the soft opening. Like have me back once I'm <laughs> <laughs> I'm really hungry now. All of a sudden, I yeah. don't know what it is. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I think people, I think people love that food because it it takes them back to, um, you know, when when Criders was open, we had we had the Chrysler plant. Uh, things were really booming here. Uh, it was it was just an, a really exciting time for Newcastle in general, and uh, you know, and then also. If you're an age where you're remembering it, then most likely you were in high school or you were in college. You were starting your first jobs. Yeah. So there's a certain amount of nostalgia that is uh, is around the yeah. United States as a whole, but especially whenever you go into these old automobile factory, manufacturing mm-hmm. towns like Newcastle, and that is very prevalent with our our aging population that we have here. And Boomers. I think yeah, I <laughs> think that it's awesome. Like you're able to capitalize on that, and it's really really cool it's it it's great as far as getting the name out because i mean we're criters and that that's that we're criters that's something uh, yeah i mean <laughs> it, it that's been really nice it also has just been a really wonderful experience because it does it it takes people back to that great time right and i've just i've had so many experiences where we're we're out there sweating trying to make burgers and rings as fast as we can but for our customers, you know, it, it's a it's a really nostalgic experience, and that and they'll tell us that. Uh, I've run into people who who got engaged in the Criders Drive-In parking lot, who went on their first dates there, who where was they'd it? go there with their dad. Um, is, is it, is it was on Road Three. There? No, they they finally took the building down about ten years ago. Okay, um, really close to the Goodwins lot on Road Three, oh, okay. the north end of town. Yeah. yeah. So it was north of Goodwin's, mm-hmm. kind of between um, Goodwin and the Ford dealer, or towards the Apple. No, the I, th- I think it that? was actually it was. No, you're right. It was. It was north of. This isn't a trick know. question. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> plus, uh, plus when the the store was open, the do the Doughboy was still in its original <laughs> spot. <laughs> so. That's true. There's there's that. There's the Doughboy nostalgia factor. <laughs> Well. It was even in its original location when it <laughs> tore the building down. It's been very recent and tragic. <laughs> you could probably take some fresh onion rings and there we go. Bring it to the maybe new side that, of the old maybe side. that would resolve the. They could unite. Yeah, unite the divide. Heal it. They're healing oh. onion rings. 
Are you are you are you going to cater the new dedication site or are you going to protest it? <laughs> Pick a side. <laughs> oh man, I just don't have a stance on. We're coming this. out with the tough questions. Everybody gets yeah. hungry. That's, yeah. I'm That's told that the chat is telling me that it was between Goodwins and the Ford dealer. So in it, that that sounds right. Yeah, okay. that sounds right. It's a, it's hard to picture it now that the building's gone. I can picture the building. I can picture the There's lot. There's probably I can't the building like lot. a Ram truck sitting on the site on the old <laughs> this site. Right probably now. is. All right, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, I, I really appreciate that, Miss Town. That's always special for us when people come who have a connection to Criders drive in. Those onion rings are hard to make. It takes a minimum of two people, a minimum of three days to do it. Three days to make what? an onion ring? Yeah. Do you grow the that, onion? What are you doing? They're, that's why they're so good. Are you are you soaking them in some um, sort of secret liquid? No, I think. As far as I can tell, what happens is... I'm sure, you, like, she probably doesn't even know. She has to marry into the family to find out. Oh, yeah, she has yeah. no idea what goes into this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, she knows all too well, because most of the time it's her and me <laughs> just breading hundreds of pounds of onions. <laughs> oh, that sounds wonderful. Oh, man, it, it's some stinky nights. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a lot of tears. So oh, I, oh God. <laughs> I heard from a very good source that L&K Produce Stand is opening up this weekend oh. do you use their onions you use some local onions some local meats you know do we have to can we do some b2b work on the show here introduce <laughs> you to some people uh i i would love that actually um that's something that again i mean nostalgia and newcastle are such a part of criters yeah. that that kind of thing is important to me honestly in in trying to build this thing we just haven't had that much opportunity yet to start exploring sourcing yeah. yeah you know uh i've i've gone through a couple of different meat vendors and found meat that i particularly like but i would really really love to start talking to some local farmers and and you know yeah, there's a lot really of neat. pork and a lot of beef in henry County. yeah we got some oh. options we got some people i got i got a whole rolodex all right have, have them Strong contact me. A Rolodex. Yeah. Old, old. <laughs> a Rolodex meaning I grab my I grab my phone and I just start looking. He said he was born looking. in 1983. 83, 83 yeah. I remember the that's 80s. A, that's a long time ago. That was forever ago. Do you remember 86? that? 86? I was, no. Hmm? My what parents 86, had, 87? Where were you born? Oh, something like that, yeah. You don't even know. I don't know. Check the health papers. It's my parents hadn't even graduated in high school. Yeah, I don't even know when my mom was in high school. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. My dad, if, my dad was only 11. I'm going to quit taking you fishing. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry, how, how, how many fish did we catch? I don't know, 10 or 12. I, I lost track. The, the boat filled up so fast. <laughs> nice. Oh, uh, by the way, I've, I've been thinking about it like a, a business opportunity for people. Okay? And if you pledge to, to send us $1,000, me and Jeremiah will both take you on a tour guide on his boat. A fishing trip. Of, of Lake Summit. Of Lake Summit. Summit it's, Lake. it's just one day. It's not really a Lake, trip. They're just re renaming things now. Lake yeah. Summit. Lake Summit. Lake Summit. It's very I've never Lake been Summit. to Lake Summit. Summit you're, Lake, guar like. you're guaranteed to catch at least one fish. We haven't done it yet, but <laughs> I'm making that guarantee. You donate $1,000 to us, you'll catch at least I one I thought you fish. said you caught at least 10. Yeah, yeah. Well, we don't know if the new people can catch fish. <laughs> <laughs> no guarantees of that until they pay us $1,000 and then... Yeah. Chase will personally swim to the we bottom of the stay lake. We will out until you catch a fish. <laughs> Chase will personally swim to the bottom of the lake, find your lure, and attach a bass to it, and then send it back to the top. <laughs> and then we how do can we get have, here? And then we can have Bash put it on the war pit. And then we'll have there smoked we bass. Yeah. yeah, there we go. What name do you prefer, by the way? I keep saying Bash because I don't know what. I mean, what else to say? Bash, Bastion, Sebastian. How many syllables are you willing to commit to this? I, I feel more comfortable saying Bash. Yeah, it used to be it's easiest. One syllable in Greg. When I, you, you were hell, you were in the news. You're probably in that yeah. paper over there, and it's like, hey, call me for estate planning. What the hell happened, man? How do you eh? like? How do you like fall in love with cooking so much? You're like, ah, I don't need this anymore. I don't need it anymore. Well, I mean. My dad is also Greg, right? You know, and and that's my middle name. And so when I was doing the law and he was doing the law, it kind of made sense. But now that I'm not doing the law, it this is kind of confusing. If you're calling the wrong guy for a will and the, the wrong law, guy for the law is doing you now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now you're on the other side of the fence uh -huh. trying to prove a business. It's like I'm in Soviet Russia. And uh, <laughs> tell me, show me on the law practice. Show me on this constitution where Darren Jacobs harmed you. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it just. Bash 
just works better. So, so was the, was the courtroom anything like Judge Duty? <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> nice. The city court was sweet. Yeah. Um, a lot of people talking about their baby mamas and baby daddies. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you'd you'd have a lot of that. Huh. I'm trying to think of some some good law stories. Any good Katie Manning stories for us? <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm not a lawyer anymore, but I, st- I still I'm not sure that I can comment <laughs> on most of them. You know the guy that's coming on next week. You, is it, you is sell it your Sean? House? Yeah, Sean's on next yes. week. He's your neighbor, right? Yeah, my neighbor. Tell, does he? Uh, have you had any like Rand Paul type fence fights? And does he pile up his leaves and shit on your <laughs> on your on your lawn? And you have to go over and whip him? Um, no, he he's a pretty good neighbor. So when are when are you and uh, Sean gonna go in together and he's gonna brew your beer and you're gonna f- now fix that would meat. be great that would yeah. be great right now what we I, need is one less lawyer in Newcastle just you're gonna have them all <laughs> yeah. making food just to switch every everybody just come over and start making food mm-hmm. um, Sean actually did introduce me to New Corner Brewing in Muncie yeah, yeah and I used their Hearst House Brown Ale in my baked beans ah, so sweet. if Rao steps up his brewing game. Maybe we'll have some some Sean Rao brews. <laughs> ah, I hope so because I uh, I want him to buy the Castle Theater and turn it into a brewery and a music venue. That Historic would be site. exciting. I don't think you can do that. And also, it always has to be a theater because that's well, the way it was a hundred years. And <laughs> and donate it to and and donate a, a little room in the back to us so that we can put a studio there that, for free. That seems you know? good. I think yeah, that's like a good trade. We I have like him on that. the show a lot. I like that plan. They call Sean the quesadilla kid. Really? Yeah, just next time you're talking. Passed on the quesadillas. The, yeah. Oh, he, he can't get enough quesadillas. Oh, I love He's recommended too. restaurants to me based on their quesadillas. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just thought they were appetizers. <laughs> <But> <laughs> Are you going to have a smoked non, quesadilla? Non Sean Rouse, but maybe. I, I mean, I, he, he is yet to buy my barbecue. So Ooh. I think he's just waiting. He's waiting for me to. I mean, okay. Start so making quesadillas. If you, it's Bro, very, it's very there. dangerous to go over and try to steal off of a thousand gallon barbecue pit. <laughs> <laughs> I, you, you get up like the fire department's going to show up. You uh-huh. open that thing up at the wrong time. It's uh-huh. like it's like I told you before we started the show. I was showing pictures of that thing from your Facebook page to people that I work with, and they were just like. Everyone was like drooling just over the picture of the smoker itself. Like there's no food in it. It's just, a, but the smoker itself is awe inspiring. I just Thanks. looked at our video feed, and it looks like my broadcasting partner is four years old. Ah, okay. he is a child now. <laughs> it, yeah. This is what are we gonna do with him, Chase? This is not well, right. I had Clay take it all down, and then he even trimmed my eyebrows. So wow, yeah, you're well manicured. They look good. I am. I'm very well manicured. And you're a little cutie. <laughs> Thanks, Chase. I, I really appreciate that from you. Usually I'm into the guys with the long hair. But... Did you just try to wink and then you just blink both <laughs> eyes? <laughs> hey, hey. He's not very good at flirting. Thank God Katie's waiting for him at home. He's, he's still new at it all. You know, you hit and you miss. <laughs> I think that you were trying to, hoping that I ignored that, but, <laughs> but I saw it. Well, I'm trying to keep up with the draft. It's really confusing. The NFL draft is so much easier. The NBA draft is happening with. right now? It is. Do you have any news? Uh, well, DeAndre Ayton went first. I don't know who that is. Phoenix. You don't need to. He, he went to the Phoenix there. Suns. Yes, He's going to play Phoenix along Suns. with uh, Charles Barkley. And, yes. Uh, yep. Uh, in Space Jam. Man, the and, show's uh, been the Pacers the have the 23rd pick, so I don't know if we'll still be on when they pick. But <laughs> if we are, I will announce that one. I don't know if we'll be on for the 23rd. Maybe there'll be a trade. Mm. Could be. Uh, Bash, you feel like staying for another four hours? We, <laughs> can, keep Taylor, this, uh, we can keep this going. <laughs> <laughs> Wait through the draft. It's not like I have, I have work at 7 in the morning yeah. or anything. Live draft coverage, man. Yeah. That can wait. I got two hours of vacation time to burn. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> uh, Luke Jackson is in the chat, and he wants to know what everybody's drinking. Uh, Chase, what's, so, in, what's in your cup? What's the purple drink? I have a, I have a nice Gatorade G2. The purple uh, drink. It's grape. The purple drink. He's Not a, purple he's juice, a, it's purple drink. He's over here like uh, like Post Malone. Yes. <laughs> Always tired. Feel like codeine. Uh, let's see. It's got 30 calories. Uh, How many servings are in it, Chase? 2.5. <laughs> the reading of the serving. So, yeah. It is delicious, and I feel 
Nice. That's, that's enough of him. So nice. you're drinking a commercial product. What do you got yeah. over there? I have an Oat Splash IPA uh, by, I think it's uh, Fountain Square Brewing in Indianapolis. It's basically a, a IPA that's also made with oats. So there we cool. go. there's a lot of flavors going on. And Sounds it's pretty like good. a hipster beer. Well, it is, but it's a good beer. I, I really appreciate <laughs> it. I, uh, I've got limes in my cup with a little club soda and some Kirkland vodka. So, Kirkland. Uh, Kirkland, yeah. I on the horse tonight. Uh, <laughs> hey, it's Costco, and Sarah brings it. It's free. Nice. It doesn't cost me a nickel. Nice. That's a part of our, our marital agreement is she goes to Costco and brings vodka. So, uh, <laughs> make sure you get that written down. Yeah. I, I know you're the lawyer here, but All right. make sure you get that worked into the contract. She mm-hmm. supplies the house with whatever spirits Surprised you require. The, the liquor. And then uh, Bash is drinking the uh, Milwaukee House best Brew Premium. Yeah, Premium. I, yeah, Premium. Yeah, what's go. it taste like? Everybody always makes fun of me for drinking it. Uh, I mean, it it tastes just like a Budweiser, doesn't it? it from, yeah, largely. From one yeah. to ten, what would you rate it? I mean, uh, where, where does it compare to a Ham's Light? Yeah, uh, I also drink those. <laughs> <be honest. laughs> you know, it's not the best. Um, I think it tastes like Budweiser. Like, like a 3.6. We're definitely going to make I Sean Rao drink one of these. I think Budweiser's a little sweeter. Uh, Sean Rao uh, drank a pepper beer that I purchased once. Yeah. Uh, it was mm. a Stone Punishment, which, as far as I'm concerned, is, is the best liquid on earth. It's a double bastard ale, and then they, uh, they load it up with uh, Caribbean Red Hots, Maruga Scorpions, Fatalis, uh, and a couple other crazy peppers, and it, it drank is... the whole damn thing. The twelve ounces of it, or did he <laughs> did he like get a get a, a, a dollop and go? I gotta die. He took a sip of it. <laughs> <laughs> he and his wife were over for dinner. He took a sip, and he kind of gave it one of those. <laughs> so, and she said, she tapped him and said, "Sean, are are you okay?" And he said, he says, "I." I'm a man. <laughs> <laughs> and a few minutes later, he looked back up, and, and his glasses had fogged over. <laughs> oh, my. No. I heard that. Uh, have him tell that story. I heard that the Bell's Brewing Company, who makes uh, Bell's Two-Hearted, we have a sign over there. It's my, like, go-to drink. And they were making an Oberon, which is their summertime ale, but they were making it with mangoes and habaneros. Mm-hmm. So that that sounds awesome. But that you can only get it at the brewery, which is in Michigan. So that kind of sucks. Yeah. But I want I want to go just to try it. Oh, that sounds that sounds delicious. Yeah. But uh, I'm Michigan's we, Michigan's reachable. We got on the beer topic because of Luke Jackson, who I met in Florida whenever we were on vacation. He's a and, rando. Yeah, he just started talking to me when we were in a bar, and <laughs> turns out we have a lot in common. Oh. Uh, so. This is actually a good episode for him to be watching because we're going to talk about Jordan Peterson. But he's the one who turned me on to Time Suck. So everybody that hears me talk about that show on this show, uh, you, you have, have to him to Luke. thank. Yeah, you have you have Luke to thank. All right. So when's this when's this place opening up? You, you we were in the paper this last. I got was it Monday? Were you in the paper Monday or Tuesday? Something like that. Uh, Sunday around there. I saw you. I saw you Monday last week. Yeah, randomly, as we had a production meeting on the streets of Newcastle. I was driving across <laughs> town and pulled over, and Haley doesn't know who the hell I am, and you're talking to this random guy in a car. Yep. And uh, it really creeped her out. Yeah, you know, that's, I do creepy really well, <laughs> Haley. No doubt. Remember to vote for me though in November. Uh, <laughs> so uh, we we talked then, and you were on your way to a city meeting where you yeah. were approve. You were apparently you're trying to be uh, a, a near to well and take a crematorium and turn it into a smoking <laughs> facility for, for, for human food. It, yeah, a and funeral the protesters home office. Were out there. Yeah, the, the big, big ordeal. If our building was zoned residential, so we had to go through the Board of Zoning Appeals to get it, to get it switched over so that we could, we could run the barbecue. But anyway, that's, that's done. It succeeded. Um. <laughs> you want to talk about the protest, or do I have to do it? <laughs> Because <laughs> it, it, I was amused. I mean, it wasn't a big protest. They didn't have signs. No, no signs. Were, um, there, were there any chants? <laughs> no chants. No ah. signs. No new. No, no hashtags. No new. Yeah. Business. No, it, it wasn't anything like that. Our, our across the street neighbor, um, didn't want a barbecue going on. You know, right in front of his house. I, I can't blame him. I wish that it was like something exciting or that there was some crazy asshole, but 
<laughs> no, it just, just... Well, are you sure you're not a crazy asshole? Well, I mean, I might be, but... <laughs> Personally, <laughs> but I, I can understand not not wanting it in front of your house. I'd love a barbecue across from my house. Yeah, it'd make would be life sweet. so much easier. The your other... house would always smell good. You wouldn't have to worry about candles or any of that <laughs> stuff. It would just be like, "Welcome to my home." It smells like brisket. I I like the smell. Yeah, I the, do too. Does he the know what neighbors seasonal? like it? He'll get a break in the winter time. Uh-huh. You're a snowbird. You're the world's youngest you... snowbird. Yeah. <laughs> that, Pack it up and leave it's in September, man. Yeah, what, exactly. what, uh, what kind of, what part of Florida do you go to? Well, this this last winter we were in Destin, and oh man, that that place is amazing. It's like North Florida, the water still freezes a little bit there. What are you doing? <sighs> it, it was good enough for me. Yeah, go to Clearwater. <laughs> <laughs> it's better the, the than Indiana. The water is like it's it's that like glowing blue green, and the sand is white. It's it's like it was like transplanted out of the Caribbean. Sounds like Summit Lake to me. Oh my, yeah, it was like it was like Summit Lake in Florida. It was. <laughs> I'm sorry, Lake with, Summit is the left side of the room. Fishing labeled boat. it. Same yeah, thing. if you invite us next year, all right, we might come down. We could probably catch more fish at Lake Summit, Dakota. <laughs> yeah, probably. Oh my God, we get lost on 800 acres at Summit Lake. Can you imagine the Gulf of Mexico? What about a, what about Lake Westwood? Oh, that's my favorite. Yeah, and I always catch fish. I Lake, checked. I Lake checked Brookville. Facebook today. Uh, Lake Westwood, uh, Cade and Danny were uh, were looking at cigar boats, and it said it's perfect for Westwood. Oh, I it comes saw with that. two motors that you can't fire. Yeah, in a kitchen, you That's can that. smoke in it. There you go. Yeah. Or vape, whatever you're into. Yeah, it can, <laughs> <laughs> that was for Danny. Can you pull the uh, the war pig behind the boat? It might sink. And smoke and that some would meats. be exciting. That would be awesome. You, yeah. Could you imagine like the sandbar party that you oh, could man. have with that thing? Oh, that'd be awesome. Oh, that'd be awesome. I feel like. Haley and I talked about that at one point. We saw somebody, somebody had a boat that had something unusual on it, and it was it, there was a sudden thought of like, should we be just running a barbecue on this boat and people can just swim out? That would be awesome I, if you did that in Brookville on the actual sandbar. <laughs> like, there's hundreds of people that are on the sandbar just to be at the sandbar, and if you're selling sandwiches. Yeah, Katie Bar. They're they're fourteen dollars each. Well, I'm not going anywhere else to get a sandwich. So <laughs> I'm sure you'd have more government regulations go. to go yeah. through. Where else are you going to go? You're on the water. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> get those event prices. So yeah. uh, you got your approval from the city of Newcastle. They yes. said we're going to let you come in and operate uh, the war pig. Yes, we are. We are allowed to run a barbecue. So, so. when. When am I going to see progress? Are you, are you down okay. there swinging a hammer, or is this all outside anyway? So it's just whatever. <laughs> you know, Can it's you start tomorrow. It's both. Um, the official opening is going to be in mid July, but we are starting our soft opening on Sunday. And by soft opening, I mean like a series of experiments. <laughs> We're going to do a couple of traditional barbecue nights. We're going to do a couple of like Crider's Drive In throwback days. Um, and and really just kind of figure out what exactly the, the community is interested in long term. Um, you know the the nostalgia factor is is great and exciting, but at the same time it, it does kind of leave a question of how many times do people want field houses and onion rings? Uh, I would eat it every day, dude. I'm I'm telling you right now, I'm into brisket. Like I'm I'm big on <laughs> sliced brisket, not really the ends. Mm-hmm. For me, not into the ends. Nah, not really. Okay, I I'll, like I'll eat. I, all you don't have to be, but <laughs> see, I one, mean, I like all of it. But if I'm choosing, mm-hmm. I'm gonna go. With one thing the I miss about biscuit. Florida is the barbecue places. You just don't find them up here as much. You got the Florida uh-huh. Cracker in Greenfield. Yeah, I don't. I've been there once. It's, just, it's not the same. Yeah. But we have a guy that travels back and forth from Florida to Newcastle. That's, that's and he's I'm bringing saying. the barbecue that's here. What I'm saying, I'm excited. <laughs> You're looking forward. I'll be to there. It. I think a traditional running a traditional barbecue like where you, where you have the briskets that come off the smoker and then you slice them up and they sell until they sell out and that's it. it that's kind of a scary idea for a place that doesn't have a whole lot of barbecue because a, a brisket is not cheap to purchase. Yeah. You know, let alone to serve and the idea of just I'm going to limit my hours to like five o'clock until I sell out. And I'm just gonna go buy all this expensive meat <laughs> and just pray that enough you are people show playing up. with live ammo. Yeah, it's not like you're playing with a dollar ninety nine chicken. Right. Yeah. I mean, you know, brisket. Brisket is the perfect example of garbage in, garbage out. Like I can't go buy a bunch of like discount meat 
And, <laughs> you know, I mean, you, you yeah. need nice yeah, you marbled need that, meat. You need that premium L&K Henry County for yeah, beef. Yeah, you do. And then, you know, and then you got an 18-hour commitment on the smoker. And it's just... Uh, that's, 18 hours is how long you smoke them? Uh, you know, it depends on... It depends on the brisket itself. Okay. You know? I mean, the the meat really decides it more than I do. But I I prefer to just take the extra time. Do you wear like... Do you wear robes and like a flower headband? And be like, <laughs> what does the meat say? What does the meat me? say? I rub it on my <laughs> face. Yeah, I, I cradle it. <laughs> it uh, it's, it's very new agey. It, it whispers to me. And... You have to have a crystal to, uh-huh. get, to, to get to into the line. Yeah, and then I, will you play? We have like a soup Nazi day where they have to like go through a procedure, <laughs> and then you steal the brisket away from them, and then ban them for three days. You come back in three days, Sean Rao. I, I could see Sean yeah. getting banned from this place, yeah. but Ooh. ban all libertarians Ooh. for a week. I could do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, there we go. I mean, yeah. That's, just, that's probably not that bad of a business. <laughs> <laughs> it's libertarian safe. They won't be there. I'm, I'm be the there. chairman here, so I know all of them and. <laughs> <laughs> We had a neck beard problem until Clay got a hold of you, so. That's true, yeah. No more <laughs> neck beards. No more neck beards. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So are we, uh, we going to talk about this Canadian dude you went and saw? Yeah, I, I don't, we can talk about that. We can talk about whatever uh, Bash over here wants to talk about. I don't know. Let's, let's talk about Jordan Peterson. Let's learn a little right. bit. Just I, a, a, very, a small primer. Uh, I say it like I'm a Canadian. A primer. What, uh, what's, why do we care about this guy? Who is he? And why did you take a Friday night and go listen to a, a PhD dude yeah, from Canada? We thought about that at a theater. Audrey and I both thought about that. We were like, "This is date night. Hey, let's like, go listen to this this sixty year old guy from Toronto." We thought about on that about who doesn't that know on shit the, about hockey. <laughs> on the way there, he's not a hockey fan. Oh, I, he is a hockey fan. His Don't get son, in the way of a good his joke. son was a very good hockey player. Go uh, fans, hockey. But anyway, sorry. Um, we talked Corey. about that on the way up there. Uh, I'm, we're, Audrey and I are talking in the car on the way to go see Jordan Peterson, and we're like, did we spend $150 to go watch a college lecture? <laughs> <laughs> that's on the YouTube? And 2,500 other people also did? Like, that's kind of, this. it's kind of a strange thing to really think about. But uh, Jordan Peterson, um, you can go back to the Steve Horwitz episode. We really kind of talk about him a lot in that one. But uh, he's a clinical psychologist. He was a professor at Harvard, um, also a professor at the University of Toronto. Um, Basically, he wrote a book called Maps of Meaning years ago. It took him like 11 years to finish writing it because of all the research that went in. Um, And he was not famous at that point. He's just a regular college professor. Um, Then Canada, the government of Canada, decides to introduce uh, Bill C-16, which was uh, basically, it made it criminal for anyone to uh, not call someone by the proper pronoun, so the proper gender pronoun. And he's like, I couldn't call him a, a woman if I wanted to for the joke in Canada. That's hate correct. Speech. Well, yeah, if he wanted to make a, yeah, it would make be it labeled thing. hate speech if you wanted to take him to court for that. So, ba- but really, this is talking about the, uh, you know, the the uh, the non-binary people like the the Z's and the Zers and. Uh, and so you was, know, whatever. What was the goal of the legislature? I mean, was it to make it more restrictive or less restrictive? It, it was to make it to where, it, basically, if, if someone said, "I, I say I'm I'm talking to you, Bash," and I say I want to be called Z instead of he, mm-hmm. and you said, "No, nah, I'm going to call you he," then I would take you to court. That would be labeled hate speech. You would be fined at first if you refused to pay the pay the fine or do anything. Then you would go to jail. Hmm. That was that was Bill C-16, and Jordan Peter said, "Well, historically speaking, there's never any good precedence of forcing social change through law. Like that's never been historically speaking, that's never been a good thing. Society has to change when society itself wants to change, and so these are compelled compelled speech laws that he's talking about. Well, that." escalated to where he was, you know, all of a sudden transphobic, and he's like, no, I have trans students, and I, I call them by their pronouns, I'm, I just have a fundamental disagreement with the law, but that wasn't, that wasn't good enough, so he, basically, people were like, oh, wait a minute, look, this guy has uh, hundreds of hours of YouTube lectures now, so that they could go back and watch, and it, basically, he just became popular because of that, and then he got on the radar. Yeah. And then he got in a in an argument with some woman on an English TV channel, Channel Correct. Four or something. Yeah, 
So that was, and he yeah. handled himself well. And Kathy then he went Griffin. on, and then he went on the uh, Joe Rogan podcast. Yeah, the the Joe Rogan and uh, became the hero of the alt right. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Which is which is really interesting if you because uh, what's been interesting is I've been watching Jordan Peterson. I became aware of him because of the Kathy Griffin interview on uh, on BBC Four, I think it was, and. I've been watching like all of these hit pieces come out on him, and I, it's really interesting to see some of these people who are are quote unquote fans of Jordan Peterson that may be aligned with some anti-Semitic ties or something. And it, you can tell it's like they obviously have no idea what he's actually talking about. Like they don't, you don't listen, and that's what, the thing that's been so interesting is I don't know what's worse the the people that make that write the hit pieces and say he's transphobic or homophobic or whatever racist what have you because they obviously don't know what he's talking what he's actually talking about or the people who are commenting on these things that are supposed to be supporters who also have no idea what he's saying like there's just this whole epidemic of not actually listening or paying attention you know he said something kind of a uh, racy uh, a little bit and then all of a sudden that he was escalated into prominence because of that, with it, with that crowd. But uh, he's if you listen to him talk, like I went and listened to him talk about the difference between perception and reality. That's not like... <laughs> he, he was talking about social experiments and psychological experiments with the videos. You know, like that... There, how is that? Is have this Gatorade really here? Yeah, like, I don't know. You can touch it, you can feel it, right? I can taste it too. So, uh, does it taste like vodka? I wish. <laughs> so I guess. <laughs> so we're listening. Uh, we're listening. We're on. You're listening to the Boss Hog Liberty Podcast. Uh, Jeremiah Morrill, Dakota Davis, Chase Payton, and Bash Kreider, uh, talking uh, talking a little bit about uh, Dakota's weekend. He went to Indianapolis to the the Old National Center and uh, saw Jordan Peterson speak on Friday night. We're getting a little update. Was she hot? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My wife that was with me, she she was. Or she, is, okay. she, she was. She is anymore. <laughs> uh, well, she was Friday, but she is now, too. <laughs> Audrey Joe Davis is in the chat wanting to know if Chase is pregnant. Why is he not drinking a, an alcoholic beverage? Oh, if it's it's going to come out eventually, so I guess we can announce it here. <laughs> it, it's a girl. Breaking news. It's a girl? Yeah. You don't look far along enough to know. No. <laughs> he was drinking last night. He was trying to, he was trying to take care of it. <laughs> <laughs> now he's given up, and now he's, on the, now he's on the purple drink again. All right. So you sat up front. Yeah. And somehow so you, you got to send in a question. So you, did you get to meet him? No, you didn't. Okay, so he had, there were tickets on sale where you actually, like, got to meet him. You, I think you had a three-minute conversation with him. You could buy a three-minute conversation, got to sign your, got him to sign how your book. How much is a three-minute conversation and, with us? And, uh, oh, Bash, how much you paying tonight? <laughs> <laughs> he was supposed to pay us in barbecue, and yet there's none yeah, here. There's none here. Uh, invite but me back when we're open. <laughs> those were, those were, I believe they were 140 a piece. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so I was like, nah. And general, could you listen in to other people's three minute conversations? No, that was that started before uh, the lecture did in a private room. In a private room, yeah, in the green room backstage actually. Wow. But uh, and you got to sit in the actual orchestra pit. I, I mean, we've so, been in the green room at Morty's before. It's not that big of a deal. Yeah. So they pay extra just to make this guy, just to talk to this guy, and he's going to make him feel dumb, basically. Yeah. <laughs> and you yeah, probably get a much. picture. Yeah, you get a picture, and you get you, he signs your book. But uh, yeah. anyway, I, I saw the pre-sale tickets go online, and, I, and uh, so I logged into the pre-sale. I set an alarm on my phone because I wanted to get good seats. I sent the link into the We Are Libertarians group chat so that Chris Spengel and Cade Coger, if he wanted to go, could see them. And, uh, well, I buy mine. And I'm, like, five rows back from the stage. Like, I'm right there. Like, I can see the details on his face whenever he makes facial expressions. Wow. Was he yeah. really sweaty? And Did, did no, his face actually, have a lot of details? <laughs> they, well, Tell I'm, me about them. The, the <laughs> details of a regular face. What color yeah. were his eyes? Yeah. I don't know that. Were his, wasn't that were his eyebrows as well manicured as yours? Uh, uh, yeah, one to ten, Dakota. Dakota. I think they were one to ten. I mean, this guy's bringing down a half million dollars a month in Patreon money. Tell me, he's yeah, got a good haircut. Patreon. Yeah, yeah. I, he did. I imagine him like sitting backstage, and whenever he has these three-minute conversations, he's got somebody back there like trimming his hair. <laughs> you know, <laughs> dude's cleaning him up. Dude's making six million dollars a year on Patreon, and he talks like Kermit the Frog. 
And he doesn't take anyone fishing. No. Well, not that we know of. He might take his grandchildren. He's from Toronto. He's got better fishing than we do. That's true. <laughs> yeah. He gets but, a uh, nice smallmouth up there. Chris Spangle uh, d- ignored Our my advice. Our beer leader of yeah. We Libertarians. He <laughs> ignored my advice to the pre-sale, so he bought his tickets whenever they went on regular sale, and he got row pee-pee. <laughs> it's the, yeah, that was the name of the row. It was row pee-pee. Uh, <laughs> he sent out a Snapchat of his ticket and was like, Jordan Peterson is in here telling everyone to grow up, and I'm just laughing about being in row pee pee. <laughs> <laughs> Which was hilarious. I thought that was so funny. Actually, Audrey was the one that thought of the joke, and he stole it. So, And now you've given her credit. Yep. You're such a good husband. I have so I, much to learn from you. I, yeah. I have two weeks to learn. Well, you know, maybe we can have like some kind of internship deal. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a terrible student. Did but he the, address any of the... the... Yeah, Con- so, controversy uh, around him. I mean, is that part of this perception versus reality? And no, um, that uh, he doesn't really address the controversy unless someone directly asks him. Because it is that what you wasted your question on? No, actually, uh, my question was uh, whether or not Stoic philosophy has any of- effect on his personal growth. I want to jump out of a third story building. Was the answer the really right exciting? Now. He didn't answer it. He didn't even get to it, man. <laughs> Oh. He, he ran out of time. Oh. Yeah. Somebody wow. asked in the Q&A, they were like, I plan on taking my own life soon. Uh, why shouldn't I? Yeah. So that one got really deep. And, Inappropriate question for and, a lecture. Did, I got, he, did he tell yeah. that guy to jump? Got deep. Got emotional. Um, yeah. Oh. Yeah. I feel bad pretty about hardcore podcast right now. Yeah. How are we supposed to continue on? Yeah. yeah. But, uh, so how it was much, rough. How much were these tickets again? They were $55. See, I spent at least a hundred dollars, but I was, I was getting hammered drunk at a twenty-first birthday party, <laughs> so I feel like I was having a lot more fun. Well, Cade invited us out for his birthday afterwards, mm-hmm. but uh, I don't know that you can listen to a lecture like that where someone asks why they shouldn't kill themselves and then go out and party afterwards. That was. Yeah, that's oh, yeah. it's it could be done. That's quite the tra- <laughs> it could be done. Life finds a way. It's it's quite the transition. Ah, so we just went and uh, ate some meat and then went home. And a meat. That's a good did, end to the evening. Did you oh, hold wait. hands? I'd I'd wanna, I would want to hold hands after that. Did you hold hands during the show? No, not during the show. <laughs> Are you ashamed of her? <laughs> <laughs> there were other couple. It was weird because there weren't that many. Well, there were a lot of couples. So you're there, saying there are a was, lot of single guys there? No, there. I'm saying there were a lot of couples there. Okay, a lot of couples. Right. A lot yeah, of people that right. thought it would be a good date. Date night. Yeah, it was. It was weird because it was captivating, and and where you you just didn't look away from the stage. It was so. It was a surreal type experience. It, just sitting there. Did they give you like notepads to take notes and stuff? No, but I saw a lot of people with their books, and I was like. These people are going to think it's, like, some kind of a cult. Like, these people <laughs> are going to sit here, and whenever he's like, yeah, so uh, this is what I mean by rule number one, they're like, <laughs> I'm going to take notes, Jordan. Did they pass out any sort of a drink you're supposed to have at a certain time? <laughs> no, but I saw one man. Any alliances or pledges? I saw one man who had a cutoff shirt, khaki cargo shorts, and he was carrying around a 22 ounce of Budweiser. So okay, I was that's, like, that's the guy oh. I want to hang out with. <laughs> yeah. It's like, well, I guess this is pretty laid back. <laughs> you didn't wear your capris? I didn't wear my capris, no. I wore actual jeans. <laughs> okay. Did he go through his 12 rules? Um, so the first part of the, the lecture, he talked about perception versus reality. Because how he does this, he doesn't really script his speech. So he just goes up there and he just uh, talks about things that are on his mind for about 90 minutes. So which, like our show, but... Yeah, but n- better attended. Yeah, <laughs> we have an audience but, of one tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Much better attended. But uh, he he talked about um, there was a, a, a an experiment by a famous psychologist and I can't remember the name. But basically, there's a there's a, a two teams of basketball players. And, I, I pick Chase. And <laughs> there's a there's a, a team wearing black basketball shorts and a team wearing white basketball shorts, and you are watching them on video. And the psychologist that is administering the test, he says, Bash, I want you to count how many times the people, the team in the white shorts, passes the ball back and forth. Oh. And, yeah, you've probably seen the video. And, and you say, okay, so you count how many times? And then he says, is there anything weird in the video that you saw? 
And you're you're like, no, but this is how many times they they threw the basketball. It's like you didn't notice the gorilla. There's a six foot four gorilla that comes on the screen and he beats his chest and then he walks off. And of course everybody like I think it was like seventy percent of the participants say they didn't see it. Now did he show this video or he just talked about it? He uh he just talked about it. Oh my god. You went to this thing you didn't even get the visual aid. <laughs> nope. <laughs> And and oh, did so the hundred and forty dollar people get the visual aid? I don't like know. Like on little iPads that Based they gave them the in the front row. Yeah, I bet they so did. A the the QR code to watch the gorilla video. You're probably right, but uh, you then he has you watch the video a second time, right? And you're like, okay, I see the gorilla this time. And then he says, do you notice anything else? You say no, and the background of the screen changes from green to yellow in the middle of the video. And once again, 70% of the people miss it. So we talked a lot about that, uh, about uh, that stuff. The second half, he talked about, he went through uh, four of the rules for life and talk, like kind of expanded on them that he didn't get to do in the book. Uh, he talked about rule number one, stand up straight with your shoulders back. Rule number five, don't let your children do anything that makes you dislike them. <laughs> rule number six is set your house in perfect order. Do I order always be- have to stand up straight with my shoulders back? Yeah, well, he, he went into that and it... This stuff is so much deeper than what it sounds like on paper. I started reading his book because I... Because you got the show notes. I, exactly, I got the show notes. <laughs> did you have the book or did you go out and get it? I got it on Audible. And he, nice. Jordan Peterson read it to me. He's the one that so I kind of feel like I, I watched well, a Jordan Peterson that's better. lecture. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm... I, so... with, in, the, in the PP section, though. I, I couldn't <laughs> see him. I could only hear him. I'm, I'm such a nerd that I bought the book and got it on Audible so that I could read uh, along with it. You're such him. a nerd right. that your wife Wait, gave you it to you as a gift. Read along with the Audible? Yeah, uh, yeah I read along while he's reading the book. Oh, my yeah. God. It's like a movie, like an audio-visual yeah. experience. It's, it's a really good way to read it. I'm such a nerd. I'll wait for wow. a made-for-TV movie about the book to come out, and then I'll be like, oh, that was good enough for me. I'm such a nerd. I'll just let you guys explain it to me. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, wow. he, he actually just finished recording Maps of Meaning for Audible like four days ago. So. All right. Yeah, we can get that now. I'll wait patiently. Uh, he, went, he talked about rule number six, which is set your house in perfect order before you criticize the world, and rule number 11, which is do not bother children while they are skateboarding. A lot of people need to learn that one. A lot of people in this town, especially, you know. <laughs> that dang skate. skate park. That skate park is it's an it incredible is awesome. thing. It's yeah. really yeah. cool. We finally got a chance to just go out there and walk around. and I will break my arms immediately if I try, mm-hmm. but I'm really excited for all of them to have that. I've told Mark Fultz, someday when I'm stupid, I'll let him teach me. But I'm, yeah. <laughs> I know I'm going to have fractures. Oh, so. man. Last yeah. year, whenever my friend Quentin got back from Afghanistan, he, he's a skateboarder, so he, he was out there, and I was like, you want to meet up for a drink? And he's like, sure, man, I'm at the skate park already. So I went out there, and it's in the middle of winter, and he's skateboarding. <laughs> he's out there with and a shovel clearing, clearing I a had, path. I had boots on, and he was like, he was like, how long has it been since you skateboarded? And I was like, since we were in, like, 10th <laughs> grade, man. And he's like, hop on here, and I did, and I, like, rode for, like, three feet and then had to jump off, so... <laughs> My skateboarding skills aren't what they used to be. I'm going to go down to Baker Park tonight and see if I can talk a 12-year-old into letting a 300-pound man borrow a skateboard and see, see what happens. Hey, kid! It's 285. It's not 300. It's 285. Is there, are they rated for things? Is it like Every one know. of those guys is like 110 pounds. I, yeah. It's yeah. not going to be good if I try. I can longboard straight. I can't turn. I can go straight, though. Really? Nice. Yeah. I've never tried to do that, but I always thought it was neat. We should, for this election coming up this fall, we should have, like, the political Olympics and have all of the candidates <laughs> try to use all of the things in the parks. Yeah. Like so we'll, him, we'll have a skateboarding event. Wow. Make them use the workout area. And, and, then, and we'll have them use the workout area. And then we'll go, um, maybe we'll, we'll do shuffleboard, because I'm sure some of them yeah. will get the shuffleboard. Yeah, that shuffleboard. Oh, and then make, the pickleball courts are gone. You, oh, know, you and you I, know I, You know I love shuffleboard. I know. We yeah. played, you want to run for office? You got yeah, till Sunday to decide. Up, sign me up. I'm the guy. An announcement? Who, I am the guy who wanted to move Axl Rose into the original Doughboy spot. <laughs> <laughs> a statue of Axl Rose. Uh, well, right now there's nothing there, so that's better than nothing. That's what I'm saying. Old people, boomers, hit me up. I'll make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Eldon Pitts wants to know about your acting career. We had we we had Eldon in here. Eldon. <laughs> Listen to you, that. You played Eldon. You played Doctor Winters. Yeah, I did. You're a stage actor. 
Um, and you're a and you're a film actor. Well, you know, and I guess the Audible career is next. Uh, apparently, um, I'm I'm actually neither. <laughs> but <laughs> but um, when uh, when they were doing the uh, the play, Candace Cody wrote uh, wrote a play about Catherine Winters, and they asked me to star in it. Or, you know, not star in it, but like... Did they hear about your war pig and said, we got to have them? <laughs> this, was, this was before the barbecue. I was like still a lawyer, and I think... I don't I don't even know why they thought of me. I think the character you had to high wear school, a Candace, suit. right? Yeah. yeah. I, the, the character were you, were you very dramatic in high school? Oh. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> oh, he's got a reputation. I, <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't look like a famous... Old times Newcastle dentist, at right. least. Kirsten got good teeth. She wants to know about the music, too. Uh, I, I had a band for a while. Um, what kind of band was you it? Toured like? It was a rock with, band. You toured with Pearl Jam, right? Yeah. What, what yeah. was the name? Uh, it was. It Tell was, me it was called, like, White <laughs> Sunday or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was. It, let's see. Grace at Arms, right? Grace at Arms. Like Grace it. at Arms. And, yeah. You have any tattoos from the band? No, I don't. I've still got some some CDs in a box somewhere. We're still on iTunes. We need nice. we need one of those yeah. CDs. We're on so iTunes. That, something we have well, there in we go. Great. We're more of a spoken word thing. Sometimes Dakota <laughs> tries to sing, but it doesn't go See, well. Yeah. Me and my cousin started a band for like a week while he was in town. Its name is this was, the cousin that's moving back? Yes, he's he's moving back. We might start it again. Its name was Poolside Bingo. <gasps> oh, I have the pool, and my dad has a bingo set. I was in go, a band. Dude. There we go. I was also in a band. First yeah. music video. What was yours yeah. called? Itchy Zeus. Oh. Yeah. There's still a Facebook page. <laughs> <laughs> I played the, the gym bay. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Oh, let's get an update from Dakota. How is the banjo coming along? Uh, Well, right now, I haven't practiced in like two weeks because I've been busy on Skyrim VR. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you got a VR set now? Yeah. Do you use your phone or do you have something fancy? No. Did you buy the Oculus deal? For the, it's for the PlayStation. Does it like fit on? Yeah. It's like it goes over your face. It hooks up How to well does that work? Dude. It is so awesome. I played the the Game Boy VR, the sample that they had at Walmart. Cousin. And ever since then, I've just never been able to imagine anything yeah. fitting on my head and looking. C- cousin no, Rick well, it's like, has it's the so Oculus weird. set. Where, and I did surgery. Is it worth it? Uh, it was, I think it was very expensive. Very expensive. But I did surgery in the back of a, an ambulance. I think I told the story on the show. Yeah. Going to, like brain surgery where you're trying to pick up tools with this stuff. And it, you're moving around, and you're trying to remove a brain or a heart or something. That would speed it in. So, like, it's an intense Skyrim it video game. It was crazy. Skyrim VR. Saved a life, though. Nice. Has got, basically, you have the two hand controllers as well, oh, wow. and the video. Like, it will, a video, there's a camera up here that's watching you, so it can detect your movement. Do you have any videos of yourself playing this? No. But, well, uh, if we end this show early enough, we can yeah. go over there and watch you. We'll, 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 do, we'll do a little boss hog internet screen. special. You can actually watch the, like, someone can watch the TV screen while the other person's in So, there. wait, you have one, too? Yeah. I well, mine's know. for PlayStation. Mine's not for the list. money he spends, man. You should, you should uh, play the new God of War with that. Oh, I just, yeah, that would be good, I too. just finished the new God of War. I heard it's really good. Oh, it's awesome. I raised a kid... <laughs> and and I killed a lot of a lot of gods and Valkyrie along the way. Did you nice. ki- did you kill Thor? I hear Thor is mentioned in the game. Uh, spoilers! Hey, I. Spoilers! <laughs> you don't kill Thor. Okay, uh, good because he's he's my man. I mean, you've already killed all of Greek mythology. Uh, Thor, this point, uh, so it's yeah, Thor these are all bonus flag. rounds at this point. Remember Chase when bonus you and I went to the Indy 500 together and Thor away the green flag, oh, and man. Dakota forgot to go. I didn't forget. I chose not to. <laughs> that was a choice. That Dead I made. to me. I'm Dead not, to me. I'm not a gay man, but he get me there. <laughs> <laughs> He's pretty impressive. Like if I had to pick any of the Avengers, that'd be the one. Huh. Interesting. <laughs> before or after the haircut? Oh, before. I mean, after maybe, but Haley's over here. Like, <laughs> five, maybe Haley right. was not happy with the haircut. Maybe after five or six beers <laughs> after the haircut, but before Chase? I could. Chase so, has a type. Before it only take one. <laughs> between my bachelor party and hanging out with him for the last week or two, going fishing, and I, I, I'm pretty convinced that uh, long hair is all that it takes for Chase. Whether it's, I don't care who has it. <laughs> I, <laughs> Grandpa, if you're listening to this, I do have a girlfriend, so don't worry. <laughs> no, 
not that there's anything wrong with that. Yeah, you know. Come on now, Chase. Who's you got the? Of course not. Anybody? I, there I, are no listen, signs on shows here. Or stands here. You have bigot. You have bigot, Chase. I, I don't care personally, but my are you grandpa gonna... would be very upset. <laughs> <And> <laughs> I, I, I like having a grandpa. So. Are you going to get the show protested? <laughs> Possibly. Are we going to explode like Jordan Peterson did? Possibly. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> it's what, Pride Month. Don't... What letter are you, Dakota? A letter? Yeah. T for tolerant. <laughs> a for ally, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I walked in the Pride Parade three times in a day. It was, it was intense. Uh, you don't get much more ally than that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, walked, I walked the route. I walked it four times. I walked the route, realized we forgot our signs for the, for the Rex Bell Parade car. So I had to walk the route all the way back to the end and then get to the beginning just in time for the parade to start. I walked it four times. Which upstream, was this? the Indy Pride Parade. In upstream, just like a salmon. Upstream, <laughs> it was like rainbow trout. <laughs> it was like the opening scene of Arrested Development with Tobias on the boat. <laughs> <laughs> I, it was literally like that, walking past some of these bars and some of the people. I was, I should have dressed like a pirate. Yeah, you should have dressed <laughs> like that a I pirate. Was, I dressed like a guy looking for votes. Very appropriate. All right, so we are at that time of the show where we start to do final thoughts. Uh, Bash doesn't know what that's like because he's probably never listened to a single episode of the show. <laughs> so we'll start that's with okay. I don't we'll listen start, to the show yet. We'll start with Chase. All right. So you've got some things prepared on the sports desk. Yeah. You've done like no sports today. I don't have a whole lot. Uh, first off, I want to say soccer sucks. Yeah, World Cup's going Writing on. Writing that down. Soccer <laughs> sucks. I don't care. Just like water. Soccer Bash, sucks. do you like soccer? I used to play soccer. I don't watch it. Of course okay, you you might not like what I'm about to say. I, I'm not going to be fan. But <laughs> if you're a man in America, and you're interested in the World Cup, and you like soccer, I hope Trump builds the wall and puts you on the other side. I was forced to watch this with my girlfriend's dad. It was, Are you saying that, you're, that your future father I thought you liked him. Well, okay. Does he watch this Listen, show? Listen, I, I do like him, okay? But anyone but him should be put on the other <laughs> side of the wall. I would include him, but if he's included, I'd have to take care of Katie, and, you know, I just... I don't want to have to you're do not, that. At this you're moment. not ready for take. I, I'm not ready for that. All right, I get that. So, I get that. I, and then my next thing, I I want to play a short game with Dakota. It's a classic. Okay. F. Mary Kill, Jordan Peterson, <laughs> Ben Shapiro, and Jeremiah Morrow. Oh my gosh, mm. this is mm. intense. Hey. Sitting right here. Okay, I'd kill Shapiro. Oh, easy. That one was easy. Okay. Um. <laughs> I don't. I guess I'd marry Jeremiah. Aww. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Because you just don't like me the way Chase does. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not here for. I'm here for a good time, not a long time, Jeremiah. <laughs> yeah. So I you, think that I. You're saying you'd, you'd f Jordan Peterson. Well, I mean, those are my three <laughs> options. You don't give me very, very much wiggle room here. Okay. Uh, all right. that, that's all I got. I'm taking. Oh. That. Hey. I'm Anna, getting married I, uh, in like two weeks. I know. I'm in the wedding. I know. <clears throat> you got your suit today. I don't have my suit. You got your suit. You don't have your suit yet? It's supposed to show up tomorrow. I'd be calling. I'd show be up tomorrow. Calling. I also, I have no update on the headless chicken, so that gives me hope that he's still alive. <laughs> nice, man. <laughs> you glad um, to hear that. Yeah. I love the We're inside fashion jokes show we later. have now. You can do a fashion show for us. <laughs> 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 I don't know. Did you have to get remeasured without your beard? Oh, man. I didn't think of that. Your neckline may be different. Like, yeah. You can do you, be swimming in it now. Do your pants fit? <laughs> I haven't tried it on yet. For Dakota's wedding? So the three of us were in Dakota's wedding. Oh. And, and another fellow uh, who since has never come back to the state or hasn't visited us anymore. He, he's been oh, here, he lives here now. Oh, well, well he never stopped <laughs> by my house. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, Chase used... Measurements for Dakota's wedding that were like three years old. Oh, so it's like he's smug- it, he was, it's like he's smuggling Big Jum and the twins, and he couldn't like, sit down. So I ooh. really need to lose like 10, 15 pounds, and I was like, I'll use this as inspiration. And you know, then three months ahead, then it yep. came down to two months, and I was like, I still got two months, and I was like, I still got a month, I can pull that off. Then I was like, two weeks away, I was like, I just don't care. <laughs> and then I got the pants, and they were really tight, but they could buckle. And I was like, good enough. We had to help him buckle them, though. Wow. Like you could see the outline of my underwear, which thinking thinking back to it, I probably should have just not wore underwear. But <laughs> I was scared I'd it'd rip 
on the dance floor, so, you know. Yeah, that was a very <laughs> real risk. Like, you should see the wedding <laughs> pictures. They're, they're slacks, right? So everybody else has, has got a nice crease. Mm-hmm. His were so tight, you, there, were, there was no <laughs> crease. Wow. But yeah. my butt looked really good. <laughs> so Slacks as l- leggings. Yes. Yeah. 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 It was a good one. Okay. That. So is there anything else? That's it. That's it. That's all you That's got. Your final thoughts. Yeah. Mm. All right. Okay. Do you have, you have a thank you or anything for me? Oh, thanks for uh, taking me fishing, Jerry. You're welcome, buddy. Wow, that was forced if I've ever seen it. <laughs> <laughs> I listened, well, okay, I listened to on. We're Libertarians for Monday, and that's exactly what Spangle did to you. Hold on. Yeah. Thanks for taking me on your boat, Jerry. You're welcome. Because we didn't catch any fish. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't catch any fish when I went with Jeremiah either. Mm, maybe it's just him. I, huh. Listen, okay. I, I've been, hey, maybe the two. The day we that... should see if my boat is still at the gravel pit in Louisville. Okay. We'll take it out, and if me and you catch fish, we know it's him. We know it's him. Because the day I that, took Dakota fishing, we nearly died. You can go back and listen to that episode somewhere around July 8th of last year. Yeah. Uh, we went out for the 4th of July and almost got swept over the dam at white, down the White River down by uh, <laughs> Broad Ripple. It Jeremiah was, it was couldn't terrifying. Get, the, <laughs> Jeremiah couldn't get the damn boat to start, and we're about to go over the edge of a waterfall. Wow. That, Intense. That'd yeah. be good. Yeah. It's like a scene though. out of an action movie. Turns out was. This, oh, we were so what happened? Ten bam, seconds bam, from bam, Berlin. Bam, 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 and bam. it was <laughs> jump out and like kick. Uh it was it was we were getting very nervous. Turns out the little safety switch is supposed to save your life on the you know, if you get thrown out of the boat <laughs> and it stops it, that had come unplugged. Uh so then the motor would not fire. Wow. Yeah. It was, it was good. Anyway, uh, we we're gonna catch some fish next time. Ah. If the weather's I, I right, faith. the lovely Sarah Potter and I are going out Saturday morning. I faith. And like, she'll probably catch all the fish. Yeah. Yeah. She's never gone and not caught fish. Mm. She's wow. much luckier than you are. Mm. Sarah's <laughs> got a good rap sheet. Maybe I should go with her next time. Yeah. I'll give you the keys. Okay. I think it's because <laughs> she's a really good luck charm. Jeremiah's a bad luck charm. So balance they kind of out. balance out. Mm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. Bash, time for some shameless self-promotion, man. All right. We um, got when uh, how, are you going to be a cash? I guess only I should business? have been prepared for this. Uh, what did you say? You can be cash only, credit cards, debit cards. Uh, no, you going to take mean, we'll, Bitcoin? What are we doing? <laughs> we'll take uh, we'll take credit cards. We got the little square reader. All right. I'd prefer cash because that's easier. Are you going to be a pain in the it ass? It smells like, good too. All I have is I, a fifty. Yeah, we're we'll be nice. Um, yeah, come on out. We'll be uh, follow us on Facebook. Because until the place is actually opened, the soft opening really is going to be a bunch of experiments. So I can't give you any regular hours. Just watch Facebook, and we will make it a point to announce when we're having, you know, traditional barbecue nights, when we're having throwbacks, when we're having, you know, so lunch menu. You're operating your business like a flash mob. Pretty much. You just need to know yeah. where to show up and when. Exactly. Uh, and what the dance is. That, that's that's kind of how it's going to go until we get until we get open. Um, yeah. Thanks, Zach, so, uh, Bertram, and, <laughs> <laughs> and Eldon. Who else comment? Kristen, thanks. Yeah. Hey, uh, Luke Jackson, um, he, he, he lives in Florida, mm-hmm. but he wants to know if you, would, if you have a PayPal so that he can donate to the barbecue. No kidding. Yeah, for real. I'm being serious. All right. Well, then, yeah. I, I do. <laughs> <laughs> In that case, yes. What's this guy's name? His name is Luke Jackson. Luke, man, I, I do have a PayPal. <laughs> um, you can donate to me. I'll try to find and... a way to mail him some pork. Or <laughs> I also like to barbecue on the weekends occasionally. <laughs> um, nice. Mike Broyle says Bash prefers cash. <laughs> <laughs> How, I, I like How that. can you find you on PayPal? Um... Yeah, you know, everybody knows their PayPal. I know mine. Yeah, uh, bashbbq at gmail.com. Is that it, really? Yeah. All right. I mean, I'm going to go set it up in yeah. the next hour, but. Adam, Adam <laughs> on the uh, on Facebook, and you can. Starting yeah, at right. 930, bashbbq at gmail.com <laughs> is how you can send me money. <laughs> nice. I like that. Uh, uh, inquiring. Yeah, th- thanks for having me on the show. This is fun. We, yeah, this we, we a needed fun. a fun episode, and uh, you were you were the best guest we could get available. Well, uh, and <laughs> I'm I like barbecue food, so that worked out nice. And you finally answered my text. Yeah. I, I've tried to I've tried to book you on here like three times. I know, and it's, it's like, oh my god, I moved to Florida because I retired. I don't <laughs> I don't practice law anymore. Don't you know that uh, I'm doing elder care down in Florida? Exactly. Yeah, but. I came back. That's hey, uh, ask him for a friend, Bash. Do you have enough parking for a bucket truck? <laughs> <laughs> we, 
We have a lot of parking. Sweet. I might be there for lunch then. I heard. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, uh, when I'm in Newcastle for lunch, Inga Neal gets a lot of my business at Temptations, but I can I can spread the love around and get I some barbecue too. That. You could be open just for lunch or in the evenings too. Um, we'll be open in the evenings. Um, because she's lunch only. You could be the local dinner crowd. Yeah. But I don't know what hours you want to work. Dinner is tempting. Um, I mean that that works a lot better for the barbecue too. Because that way, you know. Do you yeah, feel I don't have to be up 48 hours. Do you feel comfortable I... leaving the war pig when it's cooking? Like, uh, are, are you willing to go home and nap and then check in on it again? Because a good brisket doesn't happen in 10 minutes. Right. Ooh. No. And there's no microwave. I no, gotta, you got to nap beforehand. I got a good question before we, we sign off. What's your favorite type of barbecue sauce? My favorite type of barbecue sauce? I know mine. Um, he I looks, like. He East... looks like a Kansas City. <laughs> Actually, I I really like East Carolina style vinegar, no ketchup. Um, I <laughs> mean it. It's weird. The, you know, if you if you have it alone, it it just it stings the nostrils. But on on the meat, it just it brings the flavor out. I don't get too big into like each. You know, gotcha. each state's each region tradition, Tennessee, versus yeah, Texas, exactly. versus the Carolinas. I'm, what, what's your simple. favorite? Oh, I'm Carolina. pretty simple. Uh, I like sweet baby rays, sweet and spicy. Nice. I like, uh, I think my favorite is famous Dave's sweet and zesty. Oh. Yeah, oh, we're all just doing commercial. Work. Those are both great. I, I like the, the spicy mustard at famous Dave's, but I, 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 I do like a, vine- a vinegar sauce more. That's my go to if I'm having a, a you know, vinegar. Yeah, there we go. That works for me. That mustard's like a South Carolina kind of. Yeah, it is. I, I think the Carolina barbecue is really what I prefer. Uh, you know, it's really not. You know, I I just read a book about the history of barbecue. Or I audibled a book, and, <laughs> and uh, it turns out that that all of those barbecue traditions started when commercial barbecue started, and actually before that, barbecue was kind of all one big tradition, and that was it was actually really tied to politics. Mm. Um, candidates would throw barbecues, and then later, their voters would throw the barbecues, and the go down to would... fancy farm in Tennessee, in Kentucky. Yeah, but what it what it came down to was just the farmers would donate whatever there was. So it wasn't like beef in Texas, pork in the Carolinas. It was actually just mutton and squirrels and cattle and whatever they could get a hold of everywhere. I remember when Dakota and I were going to be squirrel hunters. That went as well as Chase and I going fishing. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't see a yeah. squirrel all day, but we did see a deer hunter. We did find a deer hunter. We, we, we made him. Wow. You made, we made him angry. Oh, he wasn't wearing his orange, so Uh-oh. almost fired Who, a warning shot. Whose fault is it? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, our archery season did not go well for him either. Mm-hmm. No. Nope. All right, we got anything else for him? Is it anything else? For, or can we let the witness go? Nope, I already I asked all my it. questions. All right, all right. Thanks again for having me. That was fun. Well, we may come back to you. I don't know what Dakota's got for final thoughts. Um, basically, I'm going to promote the Libertarian Party of Henry County's meeting on Sunday again because uh, that is kind of a big deal. Uh, we're going to be at Montgomery's. It's going to be 1 p.m. on this Sunday. We're going to be closing the convention, like I said earlier. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much all I have. I'm pretty excited about election season. And Chase Chase lives over there in Liberty Township. Like, he wants to run for something. Mm-hmm. Interesting. <clears throat> I want to get that uh, Axl Rose statue moved. Yeah. Did you have one made? Yes. Where's that? Is it in the bus barn? It's in my backyard. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm uh I'm two weeks from getting married. That's right. Getting yeah. very real. Are you you got your nervous? Suit. I'm I, I think I'm beyond nervous. Now I'm just excited again. Do you do you get the nervous poops? No. You do. No, I do. know you do. I do. No. Yeah. That's not where the nerves come in. I get uh I don't know. I, I, what do I get when I get nervous? I probably get more annoying than usual. Although I've really left Dakota alone. I've been working <laughs> on other stuff. Like I have not been, um, I've not been as aggressive with the Boss Hog Liberty stuff in the oh, weeks with crap. Dakota as I had been. Forgot to do a promotion. Uh huh. Yeah. This is uh, uh we're we're plugging uh, L and K Produce today. They're opening. We, we secretly plugged L and K Produce we, like four times today. That was them. secretly though. We need o- to make overt, a public announcement. Overt there. promotion. Their opening day, the grand opening for the 2018 season is tomorrow, the 22nd. So mm, get on yeah. out there and get your fresh uh, veggies. If they you got like sweet corn, watermelon, uh, all their beef and stuff. 
They got it all. If you there. if you like that fake farmer food, that's the place place to go. Don't you have something to promote on July seventh that I that I'm not attending? Oh yeah, that's correct. Uh, the Libertarian Party of Henry County is also looking for volunteers to work at the next Broad Street Cruise Inn. I um, bet they can get some barbecue. What day is that? Un- unfortunately, we'll be there. Unfortunately, I have a wedding to attend. Unfortunately, day. <laughs> what day is that? That is uh, the July the seventh. Oh, whose wedding? I don't, some dude. <laughs> it's probably a dude. It'll be the we hottest need, day of the year. We don't need to worry about it. Hottest <laughs> day of the year. <laughs> is it an outdoor me? wedding? Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> the Danny's backyard. Oh man. Yeah. yeah. Hey, maybe it'll rain. Cool it down a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's not what we're looking for. <laughs> cool things off with a little tropical depression. <laughs> Right. We are we are going go karting that day. That's what I hear. I'm so excited about. You can you can place your bets on who's going to come in first. It will not be me. Luke's going to volunteer to come. I think uh, what we're going to if we're going to if we're going to go kart um, as a group, we're going to have a scale <clears throat> and we're going to bring some bricks and y'all are going to carry extra weight and then it's going to be even. <laughs> it's going to be like Danica Patrick. We're going to treat y'all like Danica. Cheater. And treat y'all like Danica and have to add weight to your car to make sure you're hey, at she's, the same She's she's an inspiration to all my potential future daughters. <laughs> Thank Poten- you for that. Potential future daughter. <clears throat> yes. If you went to the Indy 500, you'd understand that inside joke, but you don't because you yeah, didn't you go. You there. Yeah. Rick gets it. Yeah, Cousin Rick gets it. Cousin Rick. All right. That's, uh, that's it for I'm that done. stuff. Uh, you were done a long time ago, yeah. right? Yeah. Your final thoughts were ages ago. You got Sean Round Shut next up, week. Chase. You got Sean Round next week. <laughs> Mark Brim. I've been talking to Mark Brim for a week and a half. He's going to come on. We're going to record probably July 3rd, but that's going to be released. It's going to be a plausibly live episode. We're going to release that while, uh, while I'm on my honeymoon. And then uh, I think we got Cousin Donnie scheduled for the week of the wedding. So we got Sean Round nice. next week, Cousin Donnie Morrill, we think. And Sarah has self-invited herself because she wants to come on one last time as the lovely Sarah Potter before she's the honorable Sarah Morrill. And then uh, the, the week we're gone, it'll be uh, Mark Brim, who discovered this week that he's actually a hipster. He hates hipsters, but he realized that he's not changed. He still has sideburns and dresses like he's from the 70s, and all of a sudden the crossover has happened, <laughs> and they're on top of him, and we're going to probably spend the whole show trying to discover if he really hates himself or not. Yep. So I do have one other yeah. thing to say. Of course. You know, we have uh, five and a half minutes until an hour and a half. Um, we got this brand new backpack to make do um, mobile setup. You missed this uh, county council, the city council meeting, and yep. the Memorial Park Board meeting Monday. So we need uh, if if you have any meetings that you want us to go to uh, in the local area. We should have covered the meeting. Bash was asking the throne. Uh, we really to, should to have. please the yeah, crown. Yeah, but uh, if you have any meetings that you think uh, people would be interested in, then just hit us up, man. Send us a message, bucks. or you can email uh, Dakota at bosshogliberty dot com, and we'll we'll get out there. Five hundred bucks. For five hundred right. bucks. <laughs> Make an offer. All right. This has been fun. We'll see you all next week. That's that. All right. We're going to take a group picture, but Dakota's got to run and pee.